Hello and welcome, I'm King Gaudi from Sax Comprehensive and this video is a beginner's guide to playing overtones. So let's get started with the first section, what are overtones? If you were to play a low B on an alto saxophone, because it is a transposing instrument, the actual sound that will come out of the saxophone would be a constant low D at a frequency of about 146.8 Hz. Now if you're going to represent this sound on a graph, you might expect the graph to look like this with the note at its frequency and its height representing the loudness of the note in decibels. However, in reality the graph will look more like this, because when you play a note on a saxophone, it is not just one note which comes out. In fact, there will be lots of notes at different frequencies or pitches and at different levels of loudness. Yet all these notes blend together, causing the listener to perceive the notes at its lowest frequency, while the other higher notes add to the timbre, color, richness and fullness of the sound. All these notes follow a pattern known as the harmonic series or overtone series. Here are the first few notes of the harmonic series for B flat, B, C and C sharp. The lowest notes are called the fundamentals, while the other notes are called the overtones, harmonics or partials. This is what low B on an alto saxophone looks like on a spectrum analyzer. The lowest peak is the fundamental, while the other peaks are the other notes which sound when you play a note that is, the overtones, harmonics or partials. The interesting thing about this is that if we change the position of our tongue, throat, airspeed and embouchure, we can change the way the note sounds, so that these overtones can become the main note instead of the fundamental. Or in other words, by fingering a low B, we can produce several different notes, and this is exactly what we hope to do when playing overtones. Listen to the first 13 overtones played on the alto saxophone with just the low B fingering and watch how the waveform changes on the spectrum analyzer. I have indicated the main notes in red. Remember that all these notes are played using the low B fingering throughout, and only by adjusting the tongue, throat, airspeed, and in some cases embouchure, are all these notes produced. <laughs> The reason we play overtones is that number one, it prepares us for playing the altissimo notes as the same techniques are used, which are commonly called voicings. Number two, it helps us to develop our tone, especially when practicing the exercise called overtone matching. And lastly, number three, it can be used as an advanced skill to add more variety to our playing. Musicians such as Coltrane and Brecker have used overtones along with regular notes in their playing to create a distinctive sound. When practicing overtones, you first choose a fundamental note, either B flat, B, C or C sharp, and while fingering those notes, you play the first few overtones in any order. And once you've gotten better at it, by being able to play these notes at will, you can then add more overtones. Some overtones are easier to produce than others. For example, if you finger the low B flat note, then when you attempt to produce these overtones, you'll probably sound the F note, which is the easiest to produce. The next easiest is the B flat below this note. The rest of the notes you may find difficult to produce, and it may take you weeks if not months before you're able to produce them. So before we discuss how to produce these overtones, let me give you some advice. Advice number one. Treat this as a short to medium term goal, because it may take you weeks if not months to be able to produce the first four overtones consistently. So if you set yourself a realistic goal, then you won't get discouraged and give up. Lots of people start practicing overtones and when it seems as though they're not making any progress, they simply give up. But if you set yourself a realistic goal, practice a little bit every day, be consistent, do not give up, then in the end, you will begin to produce these overtones and begin to see results. Advice number two, always remain calm and relaxed. Some people in a desperate attempt to try and get these overtones to come out will begin to bite down on their mouthpieces and they may not even realize that they're actually doing it. It's only later on that they begin to feel a discomfort in their lower lip and they realize that they have been biting down on their mouthpieces. So always be aware of what is happening with your mouth. It is true that if you bite down on the mouthpiece or even if you move your lower jaw a little forward, you can actually produce these overtones. But the main purpose of this exercise is to be able to produce these overtones with a normal and relaxed embouchure. So whenever practicing overtones, always use your normal and relaxed embouchure. 
In order to play overtones, your tongue and throat need to be in a certain position, but it's difficult to explain what that position is because everybody is different and what works for one person may not necessarily work for somebody else. But as a rough guide, when you play the first few overtones, your tongue will move forward and up, just like in this animation. If you want to see the actual movement of the tongue, you can watch the x-ray videos of Mark Watkins. What he's actually done is taken some x-ray videos of a professional saxophone player playing through the range of the overtones. So you can actually see the movement of the tongue as he plays these different overtones. Now with that in mind, let's go through some steps on how to produce these overtones. Step one, experiment with your tongue position. If this is your first attempt at producing overtones, then the first step is just to experiment with your tongue positions. So what you want to do is to choose a fundamental note, either low B flat, B, C, C sharp, or even D. Finger that note and keep that finger position. Do not change that finger position. And just by changing the position of your tongue, like in the animation, see if you can produce any overtones. Don't worry if you get high notes or squeaks, just try and produce as many overtones as you can. Try to move your tongue by small amounts and that will help you to stop skipping over overtones. And also always use a breath attack. Do not tongue the note, use a breath attack. Try and produce as many overtones as you can. Try and focus on the, the lower overtones and just have fun with it. Another way to look at this is to consider what happens when you sing or whistle a low note and then gradually get higher and higher you will actually notice that your tongue will actually move higher and higher in position. So for instance, if I were to sing a low note, lo, and then get higher and higher, lo, 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 my tongue actually moves higher and higher. You'll probably experience it more if you were to whistle. When you whistle, in order to get that high note, your tongue has to move higher. To get the low note, your tongue gets lower and flatter. So consider what happens when you do this and try and do the same thing when you're trying to produce these overtones. Hopefully you managed to produce some overtones. And if you did, well done. If you didn't, then don't worry too much about it. I will give you some more tips later on. But if you did produce an overtone, you probably would have produced the third overtone in the harmonic series that you're using. So for instance, if you're using the B flat harmonic series, so you're fingering the low B flat, then you probably would have produced the F note, which is the easiest to produce. So step number two, alternate between the lowest overtone note that you can produce and the fundamental note. In this step, we'll try to produce the first three notes of the overtone series. So if you were using the low B flat harmonic series and you were fingering the low B flat and you were able to produce the overtone F note, then what I want you to do is just to alternate between the overtone F note and the fundamental low B flat note. Just keep on switching between the two notes to see if you can produce them easily. Once you're able to produce them easily, remember you're just using the low B flat fingerings. You're not changing it. You're producing the overtone F note by moving the position of your tongue. When you're able to alternate between these easily, then what I want you to do is to produce that overtone F note, but then lower your tongue slightly to see if you can produce the overtone B flat note below that overtone F note. Once you can do that, then alternate between these three notes, the fundamental B flat note, the overtone B flat, and the overtone F note above that. Or, if you were able to produce the overtone B flat note, then alternate between the overtone B flat note and the fundamental B flat note when you're able to do that quite easily. Then what I want you to do is to play that overtone B flat note and then raise your tongue slightly to see if you can produce that overtone F note. Once you can do that, then alternate between these three notes until you're able to do it quite freely. The reason why you're alternating between these notes is to get you used to playing them and also get you to memorize your tongue and throat position in order to produce them. Once you're able to alternate between these notes, what I want you to do is again adjust your tongue position to see if you can add some more overtone notes. 
So try and produce the fourth and fifth overtone note in the harmonic series. You will find trying to produce the fourth and fifth note in the harmonic series a little harder to do. But here are some more tips. Tip number one, tone imagination. If you can imagine the pitch of the overtone that you're trying to produce in your mind, then it'll be easier for you to produce the overtone because it gives you something to work towards. Now the easiest way to do that is to play that pitch or that note with the ordinary fingering. Play that note, hear that note and fix that note in your mind. Once that note is fixed in your mind, then change the fingering to the fundamental note and then try and produce that overtone. Another way to reinforce that note in your mind is that after you've played it with ordinary fingering, then to sing or whistle that note. Once you've done that, then change your fingering to the fundamental note and then try and produce that note. Another thing that you could do that might help is that after you've whistled or sung the note, then put the mouthpiece of the saxophone in your mouth and then again, sing or whistle that note into the saxophone and then keep that same tongue position and throat position and then blow in order to produce the overtone note. So here you're trying to keep your tongue and your throat in the same position as when you sung or whistled a note, which will actually help you to produce that overtone note. If you don't want to do all of that, you can just get a tone generator, put the tone in it and then play it and then try and match that tone. Another good reason why it's good to play the note with the ordinary fingering before changing to the fundamental note and try to produce the overtone is that sometimes if you're a beginner, you may not have a good ear for music. And then when you play the overtone, you may think that you've actually played the overtone when in reality, you've actually played a different overtone, maybe one which is a lower overtone. But if you play the note beforehand and then play the overtone, then you'll be able to compare and uh, it will remove that ambiguity of whether you've actually hit that note or not. Or sometimes when you're playing through the notes of the harmonic series, you may actually skip notes. So if you play the note beforehand and then try and produce the overtone, then that will stop you from skipping over notes. <laughs> Tip number two, quickly change the fingerings. If you cannot produce an overtone, then what you might try is to produce that note using the ordinary fingering. And then while you're blowing that note, quickly change your fingerings to the fundamental note. Now, if you change your fingers fast enough, then the pitch of the note should remain the same and therefore you will be playing the overtone because obviously you've changed your fingering to the fundamental note. What you might notice will happen is that later on, the note might crack and begin to fall. Now, if that happens, what you can do is to quickly vent the tone hole of the note that you're trying to produce. So for instance, if you're trying to produce the B flat overtone note, and then you play the B flat overtone note with the ordinary fingering, then on the same breath, you quickly change your finger into the fundamental note and the pitch remains the same. Then as soon as that pitch begins to break and it's about to fall, quickly open and close the B key and that should raise the pitch again to its intended uh, pitch. Hopefully by venting a tone hole, then you'll be able to sustain the pitch. Once you're able to sustain the pitch normally, then obviously it's just a matter of trying to produce that overtone using the fundamental note. Number three, modify the fundamental fingering. Suppose you are working on the B flat harmonic series and you want to produce either of the B flat overtones and you can't do it. Um, so every time you finger the low B flat, you can't produce those overtones. Then what you could try is to modify the fundamental fingering. So what you need to do is to raise the second finger of your left hand. So you vent that key and that might actually help you to produce that note. If you can produce the note by venting that key, then it's just a matter of trying to sustain that note when you close that key again. Now, personally, I've never used this technique, um, but if it works for you, then obviously go with it. I, I actually got this uh, technique from Donna Schwartz. Donna Schwartz has created various videos on overtones, and I'll put a link to it in the description below if you want to see that video. 
Tip number four, ascend chromatically. This tip are for those individuals who can produce an overtone, but you cannot produce the next overtone in the overtone series. Now, so long as the interval between these two overtones is not too great, then you may be able to reach that next overtone by changing the fingerings one at a time up the chromatic scale. So for instance, if you were using the B flat harmonic series and you could play the F overtone, which is the easiest one, but you couldn't play the next overtone, which would be the B flat overtone. Then what you do, you'd finger the fundamental note, the low B flat. Then you will change your tongue position so that you can produce that F overtone. And then you will change the fingering one at a time up the chromatic scale until the fingering becomes the E flat fingering. Once your fingering becomes E flat fingering, the sound coming out of the saxophone will be that B flat overtone. Because every time you change the fingering by a half tone, the note coming out of the saxophone will change by a half tone. Now, as you change the fingering, you may have to modify these fingering. So for instance, in this example, when you get onto the D fingering, you're gonna have to also press down the C sharp key. This will actually help the note from actually breaking and dropping. Now again, personally, I've never used this technique. And to me, it seems like it's more work than just changing the tongue position in order to get out the note. But if you can't get it out, then maybe this might work for you. The only issue is that every time you change the fingering, there is a possibility that the note might break and then drop. But if you're able to do it and get that overtone out by changing the fingering chromatically up to the E flat fingering, then it's hoped that once you can actually get that note out, then you'll be able to do it by using the ordinary fingering. If you want to know more about this technique, then watch Andrew Bishop, Tips on Overtones, Van Doren TV. Again, I'll put a link in the description below because that's where I got the technique from. Tip number five, bombardment. What you're going to do here is to play a succession of quick notes, but each time you play a quick note, you're going to change your tongue position just slightly. And it's hoped that if you do this for quite some time, then eventually your tongue is going to hit that correct position and the note is going to come out. Once that note comes out, sustain that note, remember your tongue and throat position, and then you'll be able to reproduce it. So this tip is just like a bombardment, just going to keep on plowing at it until you actually fall on the correct position in order to get the note. <laughs> Tip number six, a few more things that you might want to consider. When you're trying to learn how to play the saxophone, maybe you would change the inside of your mouth as if you were pronouncing some syllables. So when you're in the lower register, you change your mouth as if you were pronouncing the syllable R and that gives you a low tongue. And as you move up the range, you change the position of the inside of your mouth as if you were pronouncing the syllable E or E as you get higher and higher. But when you're trying to produce overtones, then maybe try and shape the inside of your mouth as if you were pronouncing the syllable ku or ka. And as you move higher and higher in, this, in the range, then maybe change the inside of your mouth as if you're pronouncing the syllable u. You never know by trying out different types of syllables, these notes may just pop out. The next thing to consider is the mouthpiece. Obviously, when you're playing autismo notes, some mouthpieces will actually help you produce the autismo notes. It's the same with the overtones. Um, some mouthpieces might actually help you get those notes out. So if you have a metal mouthpiece and an ebonite mouthpiece, maybe try producing overtones on both these mouthpieces and see which one actually helps you to produce these overtones. Obviously, you want to make sure that the condition of your saxophone is in good working condition. And most important, be patient, be patient. It is a journey and uh, it will take some time for you to get these overtones to come out. When you're able to produce the first five notes of any particular harmonic series, then what you could do is to continue to add on overtone notes and go up to, who knows, the 13th overtone note. But rather what I suggest that you do is try and learn the first five notes of another harmonic series. Then once you're able to produce the first five notes 
of the B-flat harmonic series, the B harmonic series, the C harmonic series, the C sharp harmonic series, and the D harmonic series. Once you're able to produce the first five notes of all of those harmonic series, then you're in a position to use the overtone notes in a more advanced way. It's good to try and get these other overtone uh, notes under your belt, but realistically in your saxophone playing, you probably won't use those higher overtones anyway. Bugle call. Once you're able to produce the first five notes of any harmonic series, then you're in a position to play the bugle call. Remember that the only fingering used is the fundamental and all of the notes produced for the bugle call are done so by changing the position of the tongue. Diatonic scale is formed by using overtone notes. In this example, we have a B-flat major scale above and some of the notes of the harmonic series below with the fundamental note right at the bottom. The idea here is to finger the appropriate fundamental note and sound the equivalent overtone note to create the scale. You always use the lowest fundamental note which has the equivalent scale note. For example, we start with the B flat harmonic series and we play the B flat overtone. Then we move to the C harmonic series and we play the C overtone. Then we move to the D harmonic series and we play the D overtone. Then we move to the E flat harmonic series and we play the E flat overtone. Then we move back to the B flat harmonic series and we play the F overtone. Then we move again to the C harmonic series and we play the G overtone. Then we move again to the D harmonic series and we play the A overtone and we return again to the B flat harmonic series and we play the B flat overtone. Overtone glissandos. Instead of playing one overtone after another as distinct sounds, we slur the overtone sounds to produce an overtone glissando. Overtone matching. Here we compare the sound of the fuller, richer overtone note produced with the fundamental and a thinner sounding equivalent note produced with the ordinary fingering. By adjusting our throat, we aim to make the thinner sounding note sound fuller like the overtone one. The only thing that we need to bear in mind is that not all of the overtones will sound in tune. This exercise is used to help improve our tone. Overtone licks. There are various overtone licks created by Coltrane and Brecker, which you can learn, which consist of ordinary notes played along with overtone notes to give a distinctive sound. Well, I hope you found this video helpful and informative. I know it was a bit longer than my usual videos, but I wanted to make it a bit more comprehensive and give you different ideas on how to produce these overtones, because I know it can be quite difficult to produce and can take a considerable amount of time to get these overtones to come out. Let me thank you for watching this video and hopefully I will see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not yet a subscriber. I shall see you soon. Bye-bye.